Good evening, folks. My name's Peter Maguire. I'm from the Official Supporters Club, the Glasgow Rocks. And today I have with me two Rocks players. I have Fergus Hart and I have Johnny Bunyan. Welcome to both of you. And thank you very much for agreeing to do this question and answer with the OSC. Um, just going to get straight into it. And we've got various questions that have came from various fans. We've been asking the fans to submit questions to us. And this is something like our fourth or fifth question and answer that we've done with various teammates. And you've probably seen some of the other recordings. So you've seen what some of your teammates have said about you and things like that. And OK, this is your opportunity if you want to get back at them as well. Um, first question that we've got in is um, quite simply, how did you get into basketball? I don't know who wants to answer that first. I'll go first. Right, great, Fergus. So, um, I started playing just with my high school team in maybe about second year. Um, I was lucky to have uh, a good high school coach, John Campbell, who a lot of people probably know in the sort of Glasgow basketball scene. So I was lucky enough to have guys like John Campbell who are then affiliated with the Glasgow Wrens. So, right. yeah, I started high school. Um, lucky enough to have a good coach like John and then just um, took it from there. Just took it from there. That's great. What about yourself, Johnny? I think you're on mute, Johnny. Here we go, is that better? Not sure, yep. I was told from about four years old if I didn't play basketball, then I wasn't <laughs> living in the house, so that was about it. <laughs> uh, family, family run basketball team, obviously, with my dad, brother, uh, sister plays, mum has to look after us all and lost games and everyone getting annoyed at each other so just a family thing for me and uh, that was it since I was very young right, so no excuses there Johnny you were told to do it and that's it yeah um, can I ask you basketball obviously is what you enjoy playing at the moment and that's what we all know you for but have you been involved in any other sports or do you play any other sports to a reasonable level Uh, could answer that question a lot of ways. Uh, I swam for like two years, but um, I couldn't. I couldn't ever master the art of diving, uh, so I failed at that. Uh, I play golf with my dad, but uh, that that either can go bad or really bad. Um, what else did I do? I like playing tennis, but I'm no great at it. Uh, I think I'm the reigning champion of the Scotland national team table tennis squad. Um, basketball, not the actual official team, but for the basketball team, I was all right. But uh, that's probably about me. Football, probably the worst football player, worst Scottish football player that's ever had, ever been born. So that's about it for me. Okay, fair guess. What about yourself? Um, yeah, for me, I come from a line of rugby players. My dad's a rugby player, and my brother's a rugby player. So I sort of tried a little bit when I was younger. Um, I have three other brothers as well. So we almost played every sport you could possibly do, from football, tennis, to badminton. So yeah, I've had my fair share, but just stuck with basketball. Yeah, stuck, with, stuck with the basketball. Johnny, yeah, I yeah. heard you were a wee bit of a snooker ace as well. Snooker, I'm, yes. I'm sure that came from one of the fellow players. Yeah, I can play the odd snooker game against Fraser. Me and him have yeah. got a great... A great battle going on that we're, we've not been able to get a game in for however long, but hopefully when everything is back to normal, that battle will, will resume. <laughs> oh, that's good. Um, can I ask you, there's a, we've got a lot of fans that are younger fans and um, a lot of them play sort of schools basketball, club basketball. Um, they've came up through the ranks a bit like yourselves. And one of the questions that we got in for one of the younger fans was, what's the best way to get noticed in basketball? Uh, it's quite a, a difficult question, especially considering that there can be no basketball played in Scotland for the foreseeable future. Uh, right, right. Uh, but for for me, uh, you know, I was just played a lot in the, the national, the Scottish National League. Obviously, um, you know, I made Scotland teams, which all, always helps a little bit with recognition. Um, and you know, it helps when your your dad is one of the most hated men in basketball Scotland, but everyone knows his name. 
Um, <laughs> but no, like I think if you play, you know, in the national leagues and you kind of you're good enough to make Scotland teams or you're good enough to at least be kind of on the notice, then uh, the opportunities will prove it present themselves like the Rocks Open trial uh, every year that's held. Um, I mean, Fergus can maybe tell you a little bit more. I think I think you went to the Open trial. I actually can't remember if you did, Fergus, but you can maybe... I know. Yeah, I sort of, I sort of, I sort of came as a, like a practice player at the start of the season. Mm-hmm. So for me, play a bit on a smaller scale, my advice would probably just be to go as many to as many sessions as possible. Any basketball sessions you feel you can, you can go to if it's stay later and play with under 18s or if you're under 14, try to play under 16s. It's just sort of put yourself out there and try and go to as many sessions as possible. For me, played for the Scotland team with under 18s, now I'm playing for the Rock, so it sort of worked for me, that sort of approach. That's great. Thanks very much for that. Um, question that's come in from one of the fans is, how is it working as a team playing and being coached by Big G? On you go, Fergus. <laughs> under the bus um, yeah I think it's obviously it's obviously a difficult role um, especially with sort of the restrictions we've got right now we didn't have much of a pre-season didn't have really a full team so I think we are sort of making progress every day um, but it's also a very difficult task for G with a young team him being a young coach I think um, yeah he's managing we're getting by yeah okay Thanks for that, Fergus. I noticed Johnny sort of dodged that one a wee bit there. <laughs> no, I can, I can, I can answer if you want. It's no hassle for me. Um, it's it's a difficult because obviously I've known G for a long time uh, as a as a friend, as a teammate, uh, etc. And uh, you know, it's a diff- it makes his job a lot even more difficult when we know we've not been playing well and we're not getting you know regular victories because winning you know it help it makes everything a bit easier you know so it's a tough spot that, that he's in for sure um, and uh, we are struggling a bit definitely for sure there's no way you can kind of sugarcoat that we've been struggling but he's I think it's a, a learning year for him and he's got to really impart some wisdom on some of the younger guys but at the end of the day it's about everyone performing a bit better uh, right now than what they have been so we're doing a, we're doing a good job it's just not at the end of the day it's not shown on the kind of scoreboard yet but hopefully that will come that's good thanks very much for that um follow-up question to that and this is maybe a wee bit leading but who's your favorite coach of all time uh, that's an easy one for me it's definitely not Gareth um, but uh, <laughs> uh, but he'd agree with uh, my answers I think um, either Vincent last year and uh, the year before that or the Scotland uh, national coach in Australia uh, Rob Beveridge those are my my Thank two you. highlights of my, my basketball career for sure that's great thanks Johnny what about yourself Fergus um, I can't maybe rhyme, rhyme off as many sort of high level coaches as Johnny so I'm going to stay a bit more local um, we've already mentioned him I'd probably say John Campbell yep did a lot for me when I was younger um, or maybe I enjoyed um, getting being coached by Craig Nicol, the Edinburgh Kings. He's coached the uh, national team when I played the under eighteen team, so I thought he was a, a really good coach. So John and Craig for me. John and Craig, that's good. Two good coaches there. Yeah. Yep. Um, can I ask you both what's been the highlight highlight of your career to sort of date, and what's been the favourite moment in your career so far? Fire away, Fergus. You can tell them about the day you realised I wasn't actually bad at basketball. <laughs> yeah. um, my probably highlight of my career is probably uh, maybe play for the Rocks I think obviously uh, at a time where not very many people are playing basketball um, I take extreme pride in playing for the Rocks at the moment um, yeah I mean learning every day under guys like Johnny and Gareth um, so yeah probably I'm um, just playing for the Rocks that's good uh, f- for me, it, it's always no, difficult. Yeah, it's sorry. always difficult. What are you saying, Fergus? So you don't have to just put me under your shadow right now, Johnny. You can say something. No, no. Whenever, <laughs> Fergus, whenever Fergus signed for the team, that's my highlight. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's always, it's always <laughs> difficult to beat the uh, the Commonwealth Games for me. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it, I don't know if it will be topped. You know, maybe if last season got to end, then we you know we hung on to the league title that like, we were maybe going to, but that's, that seems like a, a long time ago now. Uh, that might have topped it. But for me, uh, the Commonwealth Games is is the highlight that um, 
that doesn't seem to be able to be topped right now for me. Yeah, well, that's brilliant. Thank you. Um, one of the questions that came in from one of the fans was, how has the season been for you both so far in this difficult situation we're in? Oh, yeah, this one, Johnny. Uh, oh, it's been a roller coaster, you know. Um, just kind of stopping and starting, um, not being able to to make it into the kind of lifting, you know, lifting weights, etc. All the strength and conditioning has basically been non-existent, which is quite difficult, um, especially when you've been doing it for so long. Um, personally, for me, you know. Thought I'd go after the season with quite a good start, and then I've, you know, been struggling to make shots and stuff. So, it's just been a roller coaster. I think it's been the best way to describe it for me. And hopefully, there's a, hopefully there's a kind of better uh, ending for us as well. Okay, no problem. Fergus, what about yourself? Um, yeah, it's been difficult. Like with the start of the season, with the restrictions, like our training time changing. Mm-hmm. Um. You guys like me and Fraser don't make as many sessions because we're part time. So for me, I don't really have it to compare anything against. Like I wasn't playing pro last year, so it's a sort of busy schedule for me. Um, a lot of travel, which I'm not used to. Um, yeah. So, but I don't, I don't really have too much to like compare it against. I've never played at this sort of level before. I've never experienced the the, the S and C stuff. So, but yeah, I'm still enjoying. It. Okay, I'm actually going to pause it there. A wee minute, because we seem to have lost Johnny. Yep. We'll see if he comes back on. Okay, that says back on again. Um, question that's come in, again, that's come in for one of the fans. Who do you reckon is the best te- player in the team at the moment? Fergus, on you go. The best player in the team? At the moment, yep. Um... I'd probably have to get it to Gareth. Gareth? Um, yeah, for, for right now, yeah. I think he's performed well. Um, he's obviously got a tough role as player coach, but over the last couple of games, though since the start of the season, he's performed pretty well all games. So, yeah, I'd have to give it to Gareth. That's good. What about yourself, Johnny? Yeah, for me, it's either uh, Christian or Gareth. You know, Christian's came in and he's kind of, you know, he's only played four or five games and he's had a, a good impact for us um, but you know in terms of actual um, overall value to the team I still think Gareth is pretty much uh, is the most valuable guy we've got to be out there playing No that's good thanks for that um, It's interesting you mentioned Christian there how do you think the new guys are getting on as part of the team because we've got quite a lot of new guys come in this year Yeah I, th- I think they're doing good you know it's such a shame that we just can't do anything with them, you know, like it's it's literally, I think that's been made such an impact on, you know, not just us, but probably a lot of the teams uh, in the BBL, if not every one of them, you know, you can't get together, go for a meal or go and do any kind of, you know, team bonding. In the past, we've taken guys to paintball or, or you know, go-karts or something and you, you just, you can't physically can't do it and it, it's a real shame they can't see any of Glasgow. It's a great place. It's got a lot of stuff to do, but, um, you know, we try and uh, make sure that we're all together as a team, but it's difficult when you can't do some of the stuff that you would normally do with the guys, you know. No, that's good. Thanks for that, Johnny. Um, one that's come in, and it's one that we always get asked, and quite simply, so guys, the numbers, why nine, why 34? <laughs> you can explain 34, Fergus. I have no idea why you picked that. <laughs> um. Well, I normally pick number four or number five, but I think they've both been retired. So um, I just, I was on, when Gareth asked me what number do I want to wear, I was with my mum and my mum just said, why don't I just pick number 34? I think that's her favourite number. <laughs> so you it in. Picture number. <laughs> yeah, but me, maybe just uh, edit this bit out, forget about that. <laughs> oh, no, that's definitely. <laughs> Johnny, what about yourself? Number nine, because I know that's a number you play with. Um, even when you're playing with other teams, UWS, etc. Yeah, no, number nine. It's just, it's just from my brother Keith. Like, um, you know, I, I, when I was growing up, I would wear number four because it was the smallest strip in in any uh, kit. But uh, I always wanted to play nine just because Keith played uh, number nine as well for the Rocks and for Scotland. And he's someone who moulded my a lot of the basketball I've done in my life and growing up. 
Uh, so yeah, just wanted to a little tribute to him while I play. That's good, great. Thanks for that. Fergus, this question's for you. Um, yeah. What differences have you noticed coming from, I think it was St Mirren that you played with, yeah. the last yeah. team, and suddenly coming and playing with the Rocks? What differences have you noticed? Um, I think the game's a lot faster. Um, I'm sort of having to make an adjustment for my game. Um, as everyone's just a lot bigger, a lot stronger and a lot faster. So the sort of margins for error become a lot smaller. Um, that's probably where I find it the, the biggest uh, sort of shift in levels. Um, other than that, the obvious shooting, mm-hmm. passing, it's just all its just all a step up for me. Oh, that's good, thank you. And Johnny, this season you were made team captain. What does that role actually involve? Um, probably a little bit of everything, you know, especially in a season that we're struggling I think it just involves trying to keep everything a bit more positive, uh, trying to keep the guys together. Um, a couple of little, you know, team rules that over the years me or Gareth have kind of became used to. Like, mm-hmm. you know, we, we like having the uh, getting food the day before a game. We go through the whole list, and every guy can bring in some some food for us, or you know, making sure people are kind of arriving kind of prompt and ready to train in, which a lot of people will say I don't do but um, at least trying but just little things trying to keep the, the team together try to keep everything kind of positive even even through difficult times and uh, yeah it's it's been a, a you know it's a great honour for myself um, and hopefully uh, as we continue to go on there'll be a bit better performances on the court but it's something it does mean a lot to me being the captain yeah that's great thanks for that um, can I ask you, both, what's the best thing about playing in the BBL? Yeah, I'll go first. Um, the best thing for me is the exposure to the sort of talent. It's playing against good, like for me, training with good guys or playing against guys that just to level up. Um, it's always good to improve your game. So I sort of like, what I enjoy is sort of seeing the talent around the BBL and um, getting to travel Um yeah, and just being around the professional atmosphere. No, that's good, thanks. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I've done it for so long, but uh, there's, um, I think for me, it's kind of like the experience of just having a group of guys that are, you know, it's not just like you're meeting up a couple of times a week and trying to win a game at the weekend. It doesn't really matter. Uh, you know, it's every day you're seeing this, this, you're seeing the guys, you're kind of growing as a team and all these games at the end of the day, they're like a job, so you know they mean a lot to people, and uh, it's kind of like a a really in, you know it's like an intense you know sporting season, which you know I quite like the challenge of and and getting to meet a new group of guys almost every year. That's good. Um, earlier on, I asked you about your sort of favourite coach and everything. Can I ask you now who's been your biggest influence on your game? Oh, for me, probably, like I said, my brother, uh, kind of his, the way he could shoot the ball was something I looked up to and still look up to, to be honest, because he's, you know, he's in his 40s now and, and probably could still stand on the three-point line and outshoot me. Um, and then when I was growing up, just kind of like NBA, I loved watching Alan Iverson, which, <laughs> you know, I don't have the speed or the moves that he does, but it was more about kind of like he was really undersized and, uh, kind of never gave up so that is kind of what I took from, from him right. Right. Um, Biggest influence on my game I'm going to have to go with my brothers again I've been a lot of big basketball players we play quite a lot outside play um, at local parks or just out in the back garden um, maybe some of my coaches again like John mm-hmm. was coached by Josh Taki when I was younger who um, helped me quite a lot Ahid Maybe one of those three coaches or my brothers. That's great, thanks. Um, another question that came in from one of the fans is, is there an NBA player that you tend to model your game or your style on? Fergus, on you go. <laughs> I model my game over any... I just try, for me, I just try and take sort of my favourite bits from each player. I know it sounds a bit cliche, but I don't think I sort of, yeah, I don't, I don't really model myself off one individual person. Um, I'd like to say LeBron James, but I'm, I'm, I'm not going <laughs> to. Okay. Um, a realistic answer for me is uh, 
Brian Scalabrini. Ginger. <laughs> uh, I don't know, maybe like a, a very, very poor man, Steve Nash, um, trying to run the show, trying to find guys that are open but can still, you know, knock down threes and, and take and use a pick and roll. So a poor man, Steve Nash. <laughs> right. And here's an interesting one. What's your favourite basketball shoe? Oh, for me, it's easy. Uh, Nike, Kobe, Kobe 8s. I mean, all Kobe's are good, but for me, the Kobe 8s, I, I rarely wear anything else for games. Okay. Um, for me, I like the Kobe 8 as well. I like the Kobe 9 or the Kobe 5. It was my first basketball shoe. So I think I've always got a bit of a tie to the Kobe 5. So I'd probably go with Kobe 5 for me. Kobe 5. Yeah. Okay. Johnny, that's a question for you. Um a lot of people know that you're working towards a, a degree at the moment. How do you find balancing your training with your studying? Uh, not easily. <laughs> no, it's, it's actually not, it's not been as difficult as I thought it was. Um, especially, you know, this year's, it's been strange this year. It's kind of been a blessing. I do find myself for quite a lot of time for my uni work. Uh, but then, you know, when it all piles up, sometimes you get a little bit hectic. But, um, you know, it, it's just a difficult thing to do, but I think it's really worth it. You know, there's no, I've kind of wanted to do that for a long time. My first five or six years playing for the Rocks, you know, there really wasn't an opportunity to do that. I was, I was expected to do a lot of community work for the Rocks and, and helping out with this and that. I was coaching quite a lot. Um, and just thankfully, as the years progressed, you know, I kind of was able to find a, a schedule that worked for me for uni. And since then, it, it's been exactly what I want to do. I want to play basketball and, and get that degree. So it's worked out well. And I've kind of been dedicated to making sure that I, I got it done. That's good. Um, another question that's come in for both of you is, who's your sporting hero? Um, I would probably go with LeBron James, um, my my favorite basketball player. Uh, I think he's the best of all time. Um, such a great person to look up off the court and on the court. Um, yeah, so I'd go with LeBron James for me. Yeah, I mean, I've I've I watch a lot of sport. I've got a lot basketball wise. I, I love LeBron. I think he's an incredible athlete. Just everything. Just a leader. Um, you know, I, back when Andy Murray was competing for Grand Slams, I was like the greatest thing to watch ever because it was a Scottish guy and you were rooting him on. So I, I would say I've got quite a few different sports role models, if you like, uh, but basketball-wise, it would have to be probably LeBron as well. OK, thank you. Um, can you tell us one team goal and one personal goal that you have for this season? First join. Yeah, I mean, I think our team goal is, you know, for a, for a while it was kind of like, right, we need to try and just pick up uh, these wins when we can. And, you know, when we got Christian and Ron in, it became quite a realistic goal. So, right, if we can put our string of games together, we can make a push for these playoffs uh, to try and get a spot. And, you know, it's a real difficult ask with the position we've got ourselves in now. But, you know, I think it's still feasible um, if we start rattling off some wins. So I think that team goal is something that we need to to work towards. For me personally, I want to, you know, get my, you know, shooting percentage back up, maybe a bit more of a reliable option for Gareth. Um, he's given me a lot of opportunities this year, just like all my coaches in the Rocks have. So maybe just to step up uh, kind of my, my game back to what it was. Uh, right, the first four games in the Cup, I was playing well. And I fell off. So for me, that's that's the two for me right there. Okay. Yeah, for me as well, team goes to playoffs. Um, and personally, I just like to keep learning. Uh, just like to obviously in a good situation right now. I'm learning off good guys, playing with a good a good group of guys, and I'm learning quite a lot. So I'd like like to just be able to pick up so soak up as much knowledge as I can, and uh, just keep playing. Okay. Thank you. Um. How is it playing at the moment in places like the Emirates with no fans there? Uh, I think it's really, I think it's really strange because you kind of get used to, it. Uh, like as odd as it is, I'm like used to there being nobody there now. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, the first couple of games were strange for sure. But now that you're used to it, and I'm like, okay, this is just what happens now, um, and. 
I don't know, probably the first few games back are going to be the same strange feeling. So uh, for me, it's a shame that there's that there's no fans anywhere. It doesn't matter whether it's Glasgow or Leicester or Newcastle or anywhere. But um, right now, unfortunately, I've kind of gotten used to the fact that we're turning up and we're just kind of there as a team and that's it. Um, so hopefully, it's, you know, it's looking more and more likely, you know, it'll be anyway, into next year that fans are back in. So the sooner the better, uh, but it's strange that you kind of get used to these things. Okay. Um, yeah, for me, I'm used to sort of playing in an empty gym, playing in Ash. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's not much of a big change. Uh, I think it, it might actually, like, affect me in a positive way, although I'd love to meet the fans and it'd be great to have them there, but it doesn't put any, ne- like, as much nerves on me. Um, so, yeah, I'm used to it. I'm used to playing in an empty gym hall. Okay. Um, so a final question here for you tell us something that no one would know about you hmm. that's a difficult one I could tell you a lot of things just one Johnny <laughs> um, <laughs> probably not many people would know that if I could kind of if I wasn't going to be a sports person, I would love to be like an actor and I'd love to get into acting, like be in movies or be in TV shows. And uh, since I am in the sports world now, my kind of one of my out there goals is to like write a, a movie script or a TV script and have that made. That would be something that uh, probably not many people know. Mate, that's a good one. What about yourself, Fergus? Uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, something that no one know. Um, I don't know, I'm lost for words here. Uh, something that no one I really can't think. Yeah, okay, that's fine. You still, to... you still read Roald Dahl books? <laughs> <laughs> My girlfriend's a prime minister, so they'll be in front. <laughs> Good luck, <thought>, Johnny. <laughs> Thanks very much for this, guys. I'm just about to finish up, but obviously we're doing this for the Supporters Club. So is there any message that you would like to pass on to the fans? Uh, For me, thanks for kind of getting involved this season. I know a lot of the stuff you're doing and uh, a lot of the stuff you're trying to keep positive about us. And, um, you know, it means a lot to me. I've I've been through the the seasons where, you know, we've been mid table we've been high table uh, and you know this is one of the rare seasons where we've been on the the low side of things so thanks for kind of trying to keep everything positive and uh, you know just know that all the players were working towards that as well um, and hopefully we'll get to show it on the court soon okay thanks johnny fergus um yeah just a thank you um like johnny said just for staying positive um still supporting your team and i look forward to meeting them hopefully one day i look forward to meeting them all Okay, well, thanks very much, Johnny and Fergus, for taking the time to come on and do this interview. It's very much appreciated by the fans, by the OSC. And on behalf of the OSC, I'd like to wish you all the best for the rest of the season. And like yourselves, we want to get back into Fortress Emirates and be (laughs) there shouting, supporting and cheering you on because we certainly miss it. So thanks again for taking... Um, the time, uh, your busy schedule to actually yeah. do this interview for us. Yeah, of course. Thanks, Thanks a lot, much, Peter.